They're going to earn their keep today. I think one of the teachers I wish I had together with them. They're doing such a good job. I just want to flow on what y'all created. So, Shannon's like, I gotta go to work this evening. <laughs> Can y'all say, well, let me say it because you ain't gonna know where to stop. Uh, 28, it started 11, we'll read 12 and 13. I'm gonna try my best to get through all of this. Let me read it all the way through, and then we'll break it down. I won't be before you long, but we gotta get out of this certain uh, codes. Uh, and certain passwords so that we'll understand the dynamics of what God is doing in our life. Now listen, I had to give way to uh, two weeks and occupy the marketplace for the sake of Pentecost and Mother's Day. All right, so I'll be preaching the next two weeks uh, what I should have pre preached for those two weeks before. And then we'll go into a new series. Usually our new series are monthly. We're gonna have two more weeks of Occupy the Marketplace. And I've prophesied so much. I think a lot of times in prophetic ministries, you can get so much prophecy that sometimes it's just a prophetic overload. So I need to teach you so to make sure that you get this content and this information and then I'll prophesy, all right? So um, the Lord will make you abound in prosperity. I'm in verse 11 in Deuteronomy 28. And the offspring of your body, somebody say body. body. And the offspring of your beast, somebody say beast. All right, let's start over because y'all ain't gonna talk to me. The Lord will make you abound in prosperity in the offspring of your body. Somebody say body. Body. In the offspring of your beast. Somebody say beast. Beast. And in the produce of your ground, in the land which the Lord swear to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open for you his great storehouse or his good storehouse, the heavens, to give rain to your land in its season. That's a cold. That's a cold. In its season. And to bless all the work of your hand. That's a cold. To bless all the works of your hand. And you shall lend to many nations. That's a cold. But you shall not borrow. That's a cold. 13 says, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you only will be above and you shall never be beneath. If, that's a cold, you listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, which I charge you today, and to observe them carefully. Let's go back to 11. The B, the A part of verse 11 says, the Lord will make you. The problem with most of us is that we don't want a, to allow God to make us. The makeup of our life has been based around our own wants and our ambitions, the things that we go after, certain dreams and aspirations that we have. But it'll only be until you let the hand of God make you, create you, develop you to be what he's called you to be, that you will see durable riches. Now, I don't want you to get so inundated with wealth and my message of wealth that you think that it's all money. Because the scripture that codes today and lets us know that wealth is not all money. It's not all money. It's not all dollars and cents. This is why you have people that are 80 years old, billionaires, and not happy. This is why you see those multi-multi-billionaires uh, leave their wives of 30 years and go date a teenager. Because you can have all the money in the world and still not have peace. And you can have no money at all and have all the peace that you would need. So you need to understand in scripture, the Bible says that I'm going to make you abound in prosperity. In the offspring of your body, meaning your children, in the offspring of your beast, and in the produce of your ground. So even in every aspect of your life, God wants to create you to abound in wealth. In your abilities, in your children, in your business, and everything that's attached to you, it should be growing. You should have multiplication in every area of your life. The reason why certain things come to you and stop is only because there's blockage in your life. For every nurse, for every RN, LPN, CNA, you fully understand what blockage is. And you sometimes, I know my grandmother had to have one and a number of other people had to have one, uh, what's called a, a bypass, a, a triple heart bypass. 
Christ, but when your arteries are blocked and the blood cannot flow appropriately, they have to go in and cut veins and, and arteries off of your leg and put it on your heart because you can lose your life because of blockage. And most of us right now are losing inheritance, losing legacy, losing promises because there's blockage in our life that we won't attend to. And when it goes unattended, you have to change your lifestyle, the quality of your life, the effectiveness of your life, the productivity of your life, because you can't run as fast as you used to run. You can't do the things that you used to do. So now you have to modify your output. Listen to me when I tell you that, because that's a wealth code. You have to modify your output, and with modified output, it modifies your income. Some of us pray for multiple streams of income. Some of us pray for God to do more from the outside in. But you can't produce more and get more. You're going to have to tap into what's already inside of you and give a greater level of output if you want multiple income to come into your life. Somebody say, make me. Make You're quiet. Say, make me. The Bible declares it says, the Lord will make you abound in prosperity and offspring of your body and the offspring of the beast and the produce of the ground and in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. This is the text we're going to work. And the Lord will open for you his good storehouse, the heavens to give rain in your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. Put out your hand. Stop. <laughs> Put out your hand. It's a wealth code. It's a wealth code. Look in your hand right now. Physically, it's nothing there. Physically, it's nothing there unless you hold something. In your hand right there is all that you need. It's all that you need for you to live a prosperous life. Now, the Bible declares that prosperity is the byproduct of wealth creation. We talked about Deuteronomy 8, 18 last night, and it's God that gives you the power to create wealth. So we understand that lifestyle is the byproduct of work ethic. And it's the body of Christ that complains about everybody else, but does not have a legitimate work ethic that produces prosperity. The Bible declares he's going to bless the work of what? Your hands. Most of y'all have put your hands there. Put your hands out again. I'm got tired. I'm doing the knee rest thing. It's natural. I'm gonna use it to be to give you a little revelation. Pain is an indication at times for most of us that we should stop. Struggle sometimes. It's like, okay, he asked me to lift my hands. He kept talking. What I'm gonna do with my hands? I'm gonna put it back there. I gotta put it back out here. You know why? I want to teach you something. There. It's a principle. It's a welcome. That at opposition, at struggle, and sometimes the face of pain, what do you do? You regress. You pull back. You withhold. And I'll prove it to you in scripture. You can put your hands down. <laughs> if a man considers a storm, he won't do what? He won't sow. So if the enemy can keep you in a place, that the storms are continually raging in your mind and in your heart and in your household, it's going to affect your output. It's going to affect what you give and how you give and where you choose to give. Here's the critical thing that the text tells us. That God will cause it to rain in its proper season and in a proper place. And when you redirect your focus and your energy because of the storms in your life to a different place, it does not mean that God is going to not bless that season in that place. It'll just mean that somebody else picks it up. We lost Jan Crouch this week. Anybody know who Jan Crouch is? Jan Crouch uh, was a media mogul for Christian television and I even think radio and she passed away this past week. Something so profound was spoken prophetically about her life that, that the media industry, the influence, the mountain of media mantle has been left on the earth. Totally oblivious to most of us. Not even a daunting or a thought on our mind. Why? Because we are so inundated with our own storms and struggles. Mantles. We know about Elijah and Elisha. We know about how mantles are passed along. We know how mantles are dispersed to the earth when men and women of God grow up. 
now we have a media mantle that has dropped on the earth. That because we're so focused on what we got going on in our struggle, that none of us are pioneering or at least sowing seed in that area. Knowing that a billion dollar uh, organization and corporation, the woman of God and the man of God that was the head of that have gone home to be with the Lord. It's an industry and it's uh, one of the seven mountains of influence that we should be occupying. I've been preaching about occupying the marketplace, meaning that guess what? Get your inspiration and your encouragement here, but that you leave this place and go into the marketplace and be an industry leader, be a world changer, and pick up mantles. If the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just, let me give you the how-to to pick it up. You need to be in position in certain industries in the world, in the marketplace, so that you can maximize what God has already put inside of you. If you think the maximum use of the anointing on your life is to jump, shout, and dance, you're being defeated yourself. You use inappropriate, illegitimate tools and resources to try to wage war on your finances. When praises go up. And everybody here know I don't like that. But that was a whole theology. That was a doctrine. That was a code. That from pulpits, it was preached out there that when praises go up, what happens? Blessings come down. And you can't say that you didn't believe it. You can't say that you didn't try it. And legitimately, it sounds like it says the louder I shout, the more money I should have. So that means the people that parade and jump and dance around the altar should be the most wealthy people in the church. It should be the praisers that are buying buildings. And it should be the praisers who are buying land. It should be the praisers who are heading up Facebook and multi-million dollar companies and Fortune 500 companies. But no, it's not the praisers, it's the wicked. Because we think that our hands are only used for lifting and praise. And it's not used for working. God says, I'm going to bless the work of your hands. And truthfully, as the eyes of the Lord go to and fro upon the earth, he's looking not for just you to show himself strong in, but he's looking to get something through you, to your beast, to your offspring, to your business. So I'm going to bless your land, I'm going to bless your beast, and I'm going to bless your offspring. So, so it's not about just getting something to us, but it's more so about him getting something through us. And the reason why he can't get all things through us is because there's blockage in our life. It has nothing to do with your money. It's blockage in your life. It has nothing to do with your bank account. There's blockage in your life. It has nothing to do with your beacon score. It's a heart issue. Oh, y'all ain't talking back to me now. I said it's a heart issue. It's the issue that we carry around. It's the dormant devils that we have in our back pocket. It's the issues of our life. The things that torment us. The places of rebellion and witchcraft that we get permission to stay. It's Jezebel that's running rampant in our life and we know the cliches we know the things to say we know how to respond but there's this honor that's oozing through our life and even though it's coming through our life we think that we can cover it there's things that begin to uh, run rampant in our hidden minds and in our hidden lives that when we come public we try to hide it and we try to decorate it but at the end of the day it's killing us from the inside out and it's our job as the people of God to show the world that there's something not just external in our jump and our shout but there's something internal in our life that gives cream to the power of God that's deposited in the earth. Let's go back to 12. And the Lord will open up his good storehouse. The heavens, somebody say heavens. Heavens. He will open up his good storehouse. The heavens will give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand and you shall lend to many nations but you shall not borrow. So there's a predestined thing and a predestined time. It says you should never lend, I mean you should never borrow, but you will always lend. You will have the fruit of the land. He's gonna open up his storehouse, but the critical thing that you need to understand is that he's gonna give rain to your land in this season. He's gonna give rain to your land in its season. So that means there will be seasons in your life with no rain. There will be seasons in your life with no growth. And I think what disqualifies heaven to respond to our work is how we handle the seasons of famine. How you handle the seasons of drought. 
I said this, I think, to my team as we were going up uh, the road uh, to North Carolina um, on the other day, that a lot of times we will give room for things to stay dormant in our life. And, and the spirit of the opportunist will try to rise up inside of us. And it'll be just an opportune time where we can ride the conveniency of somebody else's platform and ride the conveniency of somebody else's work. And then when the time comes where rain comes into their life, we try to go out there with our buckets and receive. But you need to understand that if you have not toiled in the ground, ah, you glide in here. I said, if you have not worked the ground of the place that God has predestined you, if you have not sown seed into the ground, God cannot be mocked. You cannot withdraw from a place that you have not deposited. There has to be a work ethic and a tool and a sword that you put in your own hand to begin to dig ground in the place that he's called you to dig, to sow seed in the place that he's called you to sow seed, to do work in the place that he's called you to do work so that when rain comes and when harvest comes and things begin to grow, you can say, guess what? That's rightfully mine. That, that has my name on it. There's a sense of entitlement because I put in work in that place. I prospered in that place. I labored in that place. You dare not come in and steal anything from this place because this is my place where God is blessing me. I don't come to your house looking for your mail with my name on it, but I'm going to my house looking for my mail with my name on it because I pay the bills at that house. I clean up that house. That's my place of residence. That's the place where I lay my head. So you dare not come into this house telling me what I should do with my furniture. You dare not come in this house opening up my refrigerator telling me you don't like my food. There's the door. Let it hit you with a good God split you because everything in this house is attached to a labor and a work and a work ethic and an attitude and excellence and fight. You don't know the struggle that's been going on behind closed doors. You don't know the pain that's been going on behind closed doors. You don't know the sleepless nights that I had to endure. And you got the audacity to come up here and question, or you got the audacity to come up here and try to steal? Come on, son! Wow. Jesus. The Bible speaks. If you come as a child, you can inherit kingdom. That's good. Suffer the little children, let them come. It's... It's, it's very important that we understand the codes in Scripture. But it said other ones will come as a thief and a robber in the night. He's very, very sensitive of how you approach him. He, he's very, very sensitive of how you come. If the high priest went into the holy of the holy and he came wrong, he died. When the, when the man and the woman of God came and offered time and the apostle took up the offer and they came and they said, this is all that we have and they lied, they died. And I'm not trying to scare you. I just want you to have a sense of urgency. I want you to have a value system. I want you to have a reverence for God. Because what you want reverence and what you want respect, you will dishonor and then abuse is inevitable. And we're trying to figure out why we can't withdraw from God because you're abusing and frustrating the grace of God. We learned this weekend that grace is the thing that gives you the power. That's the thing that gives you the power to create wealth. That when Paul even said, guess what? I got a thorn in my flesh. To God says, guess what? I'm going to give you the no, grace. I'm going to give you grace. And not just grace to deal with it, but to overcome it. It's a power. It's an inner fortitude. And the reason why the grace of God cannot work in our life is because we frustrate the Holy Spirit. My God. How do we frustrate the Holy Spirit? Because we won't submit ourselves to anything outside of our likings, our convenience. If it causes us pain, if I got to hold my hand too long, if I got to stretch, if I got to do more than what I did before to get the same result, I won't do it. But you will have a result that will outlive you. You will have a week result, maybe a month result, maybe a 90 day result, but at the end of the day, you will live a fluctuating, unstable life until you get to a place that you embrace the pain of transformation, the pain of change, the pain that will cause you to raise up. There will be discomfort when you walk in destiny. I say it again. There will be discomfort when you walk in destiny. Most of you don't want to walk in destiny. Most of us don't want to change. But when you submit yourself to something that's bigger than you, you will have to change. Me and my wife have right now what's called and we're disciplining ourselves. Uh, we, we, we have what's called a internal goal. And our internal goal is that by December 31st, um, we're completely debt free. 
It's not a, a field that we are. Uh, and that's it. And everything that God has assigned me to. Yes. Everything God has assigned me to. That's this church. Uh, this Kingdom Car. Yes. Highway Enterprises. Um, even if I start a business, I'm going to start a debt free. Yes. Um, and, and even in my household, debt free. I have another goal that by December 31st, uh, 2017, uh, that I'm going to have my house paid off cash. Yes. Um, oh, no man, nothing but the mother. Thank you for your applause. Thank you. I, 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 I appreciate it. Thank you uh, so very much. It feels good to be appreciated. Yeah. Uh, and I'm appreciative. Uh, that you would celebrate that. But there's a level of struggle and strength and work ethic. That as much as I'm thankful for you to applaud the fact uh, of these goals and visions that God has put before me, I cannot allow the applause and the praise of man to condition me not to put in the work to get the job done. I, I can't even allow your applause and your praise to condition me not to put something in my hand to bless. Why do you think I work so hard? I work seven days a week and work hard on one day that me and Sunday to do. I work on the six other days. Why do you think that there's times that I lose sleep? Why do you think there's going to be times that you're going to have to lose sleep? Because there's a level of work I think that the body of Christ is afraid of and it's heaven looking from the uh, he's God looking from the balcony of heaven saying all I need is somebody to put forth some effort, to put forth some energy, to put forth some work ethic, to be able to make heaven respond on their behalf. But I don't mean you how. When the Bible says the eyes of the Lord go to and fro in the earth and looking for somebody, why would that scripture be even Bible if he hadn't found somebody yet? Why would he allow that to be recorded through all eternity if we had qualified candidates? I mean, every Sunday, people show up to the house of God with hands lifted up, singing songs and dancing, and he still can't find nobody qualified to put in work. And we build our convictions off of conveniencies. That's why people don't hang around me long. I'm going to make you deal with the lazy, complacent, and stagnant areas in your life. You won't be able to withdraw from any account of heaven until you put in the work that makes heaven respond. He said, I'll open up the good storehouses, and I'll cause rain to fall in your land. And parallel that back to Genesis, we talked about it the other week, when the Bible declares that even when God made Adam, he didn't cause it to rain. That the outpouring of heaven couldn't respond to the earth, watch this, because there was no man to do what? Till the ground. I wish it could say there was no man to praise, or no man to worship, or no man to sing, or no man to preach. It didn't say that. It said, I got no man that's gonna put in some work. I don't have nobody to keep maintenance. I, don't, I can't allow it to grow. I can't allow you to prosper uh, because you're lazy. Uh, because you don't want to do what I ask you to do. I need somebody that's going to put in work. There'll come a day in your life that you won't have to work this hard. If you put in the energy and effort early, you won't have to sacrifice later on. There will come a day that you can sit down and have rest and peace from all of your enemies. David ran me his entire life. He said, behold, I was shaken in iniquity and in sin and my mother conceived me. Coming out of the womb, he had to work. David had to fight animals. He had to fight against his brothers. He had to fight against his father. He had to fight against Saul. He had to fight against Goliath. He had to fight against all of these different things. Absalom. He had to fight against himself. David was going and foaming at the mouth and screaming like a crazy man. He had temporarily declared insanity because he was fighting against his purpose. But the Bible declares it came a day that David sat upon the throne and had a rest from all his the reason why you can't put in work is because you're restless in your spirit. You got no peace in your home. You got no peace in your identity. You got no peace in what you've been called to do. But I prophesy over your life right now that you find peace and rest in this coming season. That it's not defined by money. It's not defined by support. It's not defined by pats on the back. But you will be content with what God is allowing in your life. There's a level of peace and rest that I have even right now. Everybody got things going on. But there's a resonating peace in my life. Watch this. Of the hope to come. Yes, God. Uh, I said off the hope to come. I said off what's about to happen. Yes, God. Because me and God got, we got history together. 
we got evidence together. And, and, and what happens is this, at each level that I get to, and I see where God is calling me high, I realize that I had to go through pains and struggles, and I see the results of those things, and I was well pleased with I've literally vision cast myself to what I'm doing. I can remember. I want to sit in the office, a glass office with a wood desk, and I want to have a nice collar shirt on, and I want to sit there, and I want to send people out there. A year later, I was sitting in the office with a glass office and with a wood desk, and I had a collar shirt on, and I was sitting up, sending people out there in the sales car. I got frustrated again. I got angry again. I got messed up again because I realized that the limitation of my vision had captured me at the result. See, you think that the result and the end product is the goal, but you'll realize that once you get there, your vision was too small. Some of you right there thinking that this part of it, if I can get this, I'll be all right. And you get there and you're unfulfilled. You're still unresolved. You still got identity issues. You can't commit. You can't serve. You know why? Because your vision was small in the first place. But he'll let you have it just to prove to you. And guess what? Why your vision is this. My vision is this. He'll show you. And guess what? You was thinking too small 10 years ago. I had something greater for you. So I sat in that office and I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. Now I'm working 10 hours a day. Now I'm commuting two hours. God, I don't like this. Y'all know how children do. They ask you something. They be like, I don't want it. I say, God, I don't like, you like this. I want something. Else. I want to do this. I want to do that. And guess what? He gave it to me again. But the, uh, watch this. The in between from where I was to where I wanted to be to where I am now was work. Commuted two hours. Yeah. Worked ten hours a day. That was one way. Commuted two hours home. And still preach to you. I said I still preach to you. Yeah. I still laid hands on you. I still showed you a work ethic. I went through change. We lost cars, houses, and money and everything else. And I still work. And I believe that if I take care of your business, you promised me that you would take care of mine. He said, I'm gonna bless the works of your hand. If you don't like it, work again. Yeah. You don't like what you're seeing right now? Stop complaining, stop throwing tits and bits, and get to work. Get to work. It's a wealth code. We want the end result. But I got language for process, and that's not attractive. I said that's not attractive. Process is not attractive, but it'll be so honored once you get the end result. You are so valued. You can wear the t-shirt every single day without watching it. Trust the process. I just love trusting the process because I now have a remedy to the failures of my past. I didn't reverence the process. No, the people assigned to my process. I'm not assigned to your end result. I fade out the way when you get to the end result because that's your victory. That's your success. You lift your hands. You celebrate. The attention comes to you. But I'm assigned to your process. I'm going to pull the flies out your hole. I'm going to deal with your flesh. I'm going to deal with your past. I'm going to deal with your failures. I'm going to deal with all of those things. And the thing that qualifies you from going to that place of being without, to that place where God has called you to be, is if you can endure process. If you're not going to feel like it at times. I just don't feel. That's your whole problem. Your whole life is based off your feelings and your emotions. And nowhere in scripture did anybody get blessed because of feelings. It's your feelings that's keeping you broke. It's your feelings that's keeping you sick. It's your feelings that have you going around the merry go round over and over and over again. The only thing you can come out with is a different cliche and some different type of little saying. But you ain't got no true power that's caused you to create nothing in your life that we ain't seen before. Show me something that I ain't never seen before. Then I can trust you going through your process. He says, I'm going to bless. I'm still at 13. I mean 12. The works of your hand. Put out your hand again. Fill out your hand again. I'm going to bless the works 
Oh yeah, hey. Every entrepreneur that came to here last week, everybody has to put your hand up. If you're an entrepreneur, you came to here last week, lift your hand. Did you get business last week? Did people sign up for anything? They didn't quiet ask any questions. Well, your business. Last week. You yeah. said some meals last week. Did you get some inquiry about your business last week? Did yeah. you weren't an entrepreneur or were you? Oh, okay. You put your hands down. That's fine. You, did you? Who else was it? Anybody else? Get an inquiry about your business. Share an inquiry about your business. He's going to bless the works of your hands. Put your hands down. Everybody else, put your hands up. Is it something that you want to do? Is it something that you want to have? Is it something that you're aspiring to do? Is it something that God's got inside of you that's got to come out? Is it something that you got to dream about? Something you got vision about? Something that's got to come up out of you? Something that God's promised you? Is it something that you want to see in the earth that you don't see yet? Is it something that's trapped inside of you just fighting it out? He's going to bless the works of your hand. Now, critical, thank you, Grandma, for being here today. So prophetic. It's critical that you get to a certain place in your life that it ain't about the money. Yeah. I can remember a number of days that I talked to that woman that got right there, and it wasn't about the money, and it wasn't about the stuff. She said, I want my babies blessed. I want my children blessed, and I want their children blessed. I'm just concerned about my babies. He said, the Bible declares in 11, it says, I'm going to bless you and make you prosperous and the offspring of your family. So for some of us, we're going to be, you should praise right here, you probably should clap, first time millionaire. And I wish, I so wish, I said you put your hands down. I so wish that we had a blueprint to go back. I so wish that we had a model to be go back. I so wish we could just say, hey, it's already in place. We just got to make it better. But wait up. You got a preacher that's going to lay hands on you. You got a preacher that's going to prophesy to you. You got a preacher that's going to pray for you. And despite it not being in your bloodline, I've got the authority of heaven to place it on your life. And if you honor God, and you walk the right before God, we will monetize your obedience. I said he will monetize your obedience. We will bless you and compensate you when you commit yourself and submitting to the process. Now everybody ain't gonna respond right now. And that's a problem. You're looking for people to clap. You look at people to support, and they don't see the finished product yet. The finished product is between you and God. The finished product says it's a guarantee that you'll get it, but you're going to love to go through the process. You're going to be broke going through the process. Ruth ain't showing to the vineyard, talking about some beer away, and Jimmy Choo. She was putting in work, a type of work that some of y'all asking for more ass, that you ain't even in the work for. Stop asking for more. Hey! Hey, boy, boy. Boaz was not attracted to her looks. Read the text. The Bible said, who is this slave? Who is this slave? Who is this slave? It's a different type of work I think about this one right here. She was sweating. She was dirty. All to the point that she began to break the law because of her work ethic. When was the last time that God blessed you for breaking the law? She had moved herself out of the area where they were supposed to glean. And she began to work in another man's field. And in another man's vineyard. And she began to get to cross the line. You ain't crossed the line in your work ethic yet. You're too busy giving excuses. You're too busy asking God to do something that you ain't ready to put into work again. So God says, until you're able to cross certain boundaries and lines, in your life, I can't bless you. Lord, set you up for better. Some of these things that you're asking for, you ask asking for off the strength of him being God. Yes, he can do it, but you can't have it. Who uh, has financial deliverers are more attracted to the internal things than external? Jesus. Yes, yes my God. So I can recognize it's something different about your output. It's yes. not your exterior. Yes, Lord. Yes. Ah, I'm thanking God. I was prophetic. Because I was prophetic some 15 years ago. And I was able to recognize there's something different about her output. Something different about her output. She got sisters and brothers, and there's a whole plethora of other women out here and doing some beautiful stuff. But I recognize the work ethic there. That's gonna give me longevity. I ain't got to worry about certain things laid on in life. I ain't got to worry about certain attacks coming along the way because there's a work ethic there that I can sow into. And when you find one woman who 
work of and another way to work and you never have to worry about being broke. You be fine being broke because you broke together. You ain't got no money together. You eat hot dogs together. You eat booze and noodles together. And you a okay. You sit in the dark together. Ain't no gas in the car. You just sit there outside together. You eat lim or eat drink lemonade on the porch together. And you ain't worried about the money. You ain't worried about the stuff because guess what? You together. But you understand that when we turn our hands and begin to get the work, it's not going to be just multiple streams of income, but it'll be multiple businesses that come about of us. It'll be different changes in our community. All of this that you see and all the things that we're about to come against and all the things that we're about to come into is based off of work ethic from years ago. I said years ago. So listen, this is not the season where people are going to celebrate and make it nice and you know, cute for you. This is the season where you get to work. And none of y'all got a problem going a week in the hole when you start a new job. Wow. You know policy says does what? You go a week in the hole. And you don't get paid that following from that first week. You get the next paycheck. And you come to God with this blessing to go up praises from down this house. You reach your hand up and grab it. And you still go home with nothing in your hand. Sometimes you gotta go in the hole. I know y'all wanna hear that. Sometimes your credit score's gonna be affected. Sometimes your savings gonna take a hit. Sometimes your income is gonna decline. But he still is gonna bless the works of your hand. Sometimes you're gonna have to go through without and still strategize. Still be attentive to what heaven is saying. Sometimes your situation, I see it, I see it myself. Sometimes your situation can be so daunting that you just get numb and non-responsive. Even when heaven is doing his great work, heaven is doing his greatest work in your life when earth is not responding. When the earth is not responding, that's when heaven stands at his feet and says, I'm gonna do a great work in your life. When people leave your side, when the business seems like it's gonna crumble, when all hell is breaking loose, and he's called you to take change in your life that you can't trace, that you don't have a blueprint for, you don't have a language for, he's called you to make certain movement and go from here to there. Why? Because he's trying to protect the end product that he's promised you and guaranteed you. So he had to take you from a place of being complacent to a place of movement. But the body of Christ don't know where heaven moves. Look like. Heaven's movement in your life is when everything is standing still. Not a kind of Matthew, no problems. No voice of God. No message, no angels, no prophetic utterances. And God picked shepherds. In the synagogue, shepherds at church, shepherds praying, no, no, no. shepherds in the field working. Woo! I know y'all like the bee lines for the little baby in the manger. I do too. I know y'all love the wise men. All the trash, y'all try to count that up. I get it. But the activation of God's voice again came to shepherds in the field working, tending sheep. They didn't come to the people in the church, they didn't come to the people nowhere else, but it came to people that were in movement, in transit, who had been faithful during the silent seasons of heaven. They didn't lead to the left or right. But they continue to work. Some of y'all don't know what to do, and I'll prove it to you. But how you act and how you behave and how that thing rises up when your supervisor leaves. <laughs> supervisor comes in your office, come around, and you. Hey, yes, good morning. You're trying to talk about it. Everything's good. Good to see you. As soon as they leave, you peek. As soon as they go out of their sight, guess what? The real you rises up. The real you rises up. So if that's how you practice the presence of authority, what makes you change on Sunday morning? You get antsy. Not when I come around with the presence of God comes around. Don't know what to do. And you give certain cliches and answers just to get by this conversation. If I can just get through this conversation, I'll be fine. But there's a certain level of communication and verbiage that you're going to have to go back and get right yeah. to get out of God what you need. Yeah. So 
So if you've been avoiding the boss the whole time and then promotion comes around, evaluation comes around, and you step up in the office like, yes, I want to apply for the evaluation, who are you? <laughs> Where do you come from? I just know you have that. I don't even know who you are. I don't know, watch this, the real you. I don't think you. And they tell you, you can humble yourself and just be a real you, then maybe promotion can take place. But we're praying to a supervisor, we're praying to a God, we're praying to a superior, and we're treating like the boss on our job. So when the presence comes, we don't know what to do, we don't know how to respond. But if you pray to a father, y'all don't hear me today. I said, instead of praying to a supervisor, if you pray to a father, he will then give you instruction. My children do it all the time. Daddy, can I have, yes, if you do this. I'm done. And I'll prove it to you. Go to 13. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and you only will be above and will not be underneath. <sighs> if. I mean, that just scraps every opportunity you think that you're going to slide in there with your heart. I mean, that just scraps up. I mean, it sounded so good from 11 down to the 8 part of 13. You just thought you was going to get on up in there. You thought everything was going to be cool. You thought everything was going to be straight. You was the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. You know, you was abounding in prosperity. Your body was good. Your offspring was good. The beast was good. The ground was good. God promised it to your father. He going to bless the work through your hands. You're going to do all that stuff. He'll make you the head and not the tail. And all only above and another be beneath and you'll find yourself in all these prosperous places but here's the contingency and the conjunction and where most people stop at. You know we praise to a limit then we stop. We serve to a limit then we stop. Y'all know we have those buttons that you know we, we say look I ain't going no further than here I don't care what happens. The Bible declares it says if you listen to the commandments of the Lord your God which I charge you today Observe them, Catholic. So you can have all of that stuff. It's right there for you, not a glass season. It's right there for the taking. If you're obedient. The wealth code, and I'd like to leave you today. I wish I'd have told you my sermon from the beginning, sermon topic, which was wealth code. Um, I tell you now, I don't have three points to the conclusion like a good seminary. I'm sorry. <laughs> I only have one point, one statement. Open conclusion, no closing. One word, it's gonna change your life. And also put before you a fork in the road. Uh, that word is obey. I wish I could hike you to a point where you jump in and shout, that ain't gonna change nothing. I wish there was a crescendo of praise and a how and a All this stuff is great. I'll tell you one simple word. It will change the full dynamics of your life, and that's okay. You stand there today, the fork in the road. You got an opportunity. I tell my, my married couples this all the time. You got an opportunity to be an Abraham and a Sarah, or you can be an Ahab or a Jezebel. I sat there this week, loaded up by so many different distractions, and God showed me a glimpse of how he manages our destiny and the affairs of our lives. And I was at a fork in the road, and I said, God, I could go this way and do this, or I could go this way and do that. And he began to give me a glimpse of my future, and he showed me how he would literally orchestrate a different path for your life because of disobedience or obedience. And I was sitting there at a fork in the road, and I said, you know what? I really don't feel like doing it this way over here. I really want to do this, and I really want to go about it this way. And he began to show me the destruction and the failures and the different attempts, but never being able to uh, be successful and hit certain goals if I went this path. And then he showed me the blessings, and he showed me the open doors, and how prosperity would stay not just in my life, but in the life of my children, children, children if I go this path. And what you fail to realize, this is not just a one-time event and everything is smooth. Every single day you are faced with folks in the road that you can end up being an Abraham or a Sarah or an Ahab or a Jezebel. And God will give you grace, mercy, all of that stuff to try to get you back on course. But some of us will fall victim to the familiarity of our past 
and we will continue down the path. And once we get to that certain place, expecting certain results, it won't be there. And then he'll send you back to the place where you made your last bad decision and you'll have to get it right and repent and humble yourself and then start over again. And he can expedite process like he did for Jonah. He can pull you out of Sodom and Gomorrah, but some of you will have the audacity to look back and lock into a place that he pulled you from. And just like Lot's wife, he'll turn you into a pillar of salt. But I put before you today goodness and mercy and destruction and failure. I put before you today open doors and access or destruction and brick walls. I put before you today the question of your life, the call of your destiny, and your answer is either yes or no. Break all generational curses. Yeah. It's how you respond. Read Deuteronomy when you get a chance. I put before you today life or death. What is it? Blue pill, red pill? Yeah, Was that the matrix? Yes, sir. I put before you today life or death. If you choose this, you will have this. And if you choose this, you will have this. I wish it was another way. I wish I could make it up and give it to you a different way. Is you responding to the question? Is you answering the question? And is you giving God the proper answer? Don't blame me, because you gave the wrong answer. Don't get agitated with nobody else, because you chose the wrong path. He said, I'll bless the work of your hands, meaning I'll empower you to do it. And it went, no matter what path you take, there will be a sense of you still trying to get it done. Yeah. Everybody stand up. Hands up. Father, I release right now over this house a work ethic like never before. Let us not lean to the left or the right, but let us consider you in all of our ways. Father, I pray right now that you give us access to occupy. That you will open up doors to us. I come against dishonor. I come against rejection. I come against the backlash. I come against the failures of their past. And I pray blessings over their life. The north, south, east, and the west have heaven to respond to their work. And the captain, we give you all the glory and the honor in Jesus. Match this name that we pray. Amen and amen. Celebrate the Lord by the clapping of your hands. Pray very quickly. I'll be prophesying for the next five minutes thereafter on the movement of this church and how you play upon it. That lift your hands, please, sir. Father, I pray right now over his life that he particularly makes the right decision. I come against the influence that cause him to make bad decisions and go down the wrong path. Father, right now, make a path of escape, an avenue of escape to get him back into your perfect will. And I pray access, prosperity, and blessings over his life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. I pray the peace of God over your life, woman of God. And I pray the strength to decide. I come against double mindedness, I come against wavering. And I pray that the confidence of heaven will be your portion. That you will take a stand and acquire and apprehend what's rightfully yours. That you will walk in the fruit of the land, he will bless you. And all that you set your hands to in your heart to, this should be some of your finest hours. And God says he wants you to remember that it was I who gave you the power to create wealth. Never compromise. Never put it off to the side. But it's God's power that's going to create opportunities for you. God says I'm going to give you a new zeal, a new passion, and new desires. You found your ground. You found your place. You found your vineyard to work in. And God says I'm going to bless the works of your hands. This season that you've gone through where it's cycled and it seems like things have spiraled out of control. It was all based off of that season, that area, not being able to yield up to you what God has for you. But you shall see the fruit and the work of your labor. You shall see harvest in this coming hour. God says, I'm going to bring all things lost back unto you. Everything that you thought you lost is coming back to you. I pray that you're blessed. Your household is blessed. Your company going is blessed. That you'll be above only and never beneath in Jesus' name. I pray the strength of God over you.
in your life. And I come against the attack of the enemies right now. Your attack is internal. It's not even external. But it's internal. How you view yourself. How you size yourself up. And I come against people giving you bad advice and sizing you up because of your condition. I don't look at you as who you are, but I look at you for where you're going. And people don't even have the capacity to speak into your life. They can only monitor or measure you by what they see. But I speak to the woman of God inside of you. You have more anointing in your life, more power in your life than people would even recognize. And I come against this whisper. There's a chitter chatter in your ear. And people are trying to discredit what's on your life. I come against this, even the working of like uh, a counterproductive uh, type of action uh, and words that are slowing down forward progress. I prophesy over your life right now that God will give you, give you the strength and, and the anointing and the sermon. There it is. Thank you, God. He gives you the sermon to be able to recognize the angelic and demonic in the precious name of Jesus. I pray strength. I pray power. I pray dominion. He's fine. I pray dominion and power and understanding and wisdom in the matchless name of Jesus that I pray. Amen and amen. Put your hands together and bless you. Father, I thank you for John and what you're doing in his life. Lord God, I bless you that he's going to be a world changer. I come against how people will try to label him and how people will try to process him. And I pray right now, Lord God, for the uh, miracle working power of having to be his portion. I come against infirmity and sicknesses. I even come against people trying to give him uh, certain type of medications because of his behavior. Father, he is your peculiar treasure. He is your son of thunder. And I bind the hand of, of the enemy right now that we try to work against him. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray that this man of God come forth in full passion and power and splendor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Somebody says the anointing that destroys the yoke. of our church and what we're going to be doing over the next six months. Um, there's a lot of activity internally with what's taking place. God has had us in the seas and where it's almost like we've been underground. It's almost like we've been underground. There's certain things that God has not made available and visible for people to see. But this will be a season in our life as a body, as a church, that we will become more visible, not just in the eyes of believers. But God says, I've been sending you since day one to a people that I'm calling for from the highways and the byways, people that have been looked over. And it's easy to attract the saints. It's easy to move uh, people from one church to another. But God has called us to a hard season in a hard case. And God says, I'll make this church a storehouse. You don't hear me today. He said, I'm going to open up a good storehouse through this ministry. This ministry will be a gateway of glory for healing in this city, for deliverance in this community. And listen to me, you will be faced. You will be faced with choices and decisions. And even now, come here, you two. You will be faced with choices and decisions. And if you're obedient to them, God's going to yield unto you immediate harvest. Lift your hands.
Overcome, they shall recover all and match the favor of Jesus Christ. I pray. 